I was hanging out with Brass Facts recently for a little bit of night vision shooting and male bonding. We were both shooting our 11.5 ARs under nods, mine equipped with a PEC-15 and his equipped with a different PEC-15. Mine is an L3 Harris at PL PEC-15, but Brass Vax has a D-Ball A2, also known as the PEC-15A. Despite looking totally different and being made by different companies, both of these devices have the same capabilities and approximate performance. They're both built to the military's requirements for the PEC-15, and they both have NSN numbers, but the AT-PL was much more widely fielded, and that ubiquity makes it the PEC-15. This is a similar situation to the older PEC-2. The laser commonly referred to as the PEC-2 is the InSight TPI-AL, but there was another PEC-2, the laser device's D-Ball-I. The TPI-AL and the D-Ball-I are both infrared-only units, an IR designator and an IR illuminator in separate emitters. Steiner still calls the D-Ball I-2-9007 the PEC-2 on their website, even though it looks radically different from the old laser devices D-Ball I and I-2. Steiner, or Beretta Defense Technologies, or whatever they call themselves these days, recently discontinued the 9007, leaving a rectangle-shaped hole in my heart that cannot be filled. So what's the difference between the PEC-2 and the PEC-15, aside from the obvious answer of 13 PECs? The PEC-15s have the same paired IR capabilities as the PEC-2, with the addition of a visible laser slaved to the IR designator for easy daytime zeroing. The devices have the same capabilities as each other, but are very different otherwise. The AT-PL has a much larger body compared to the D-Ball A2, but it's made of plastic and full of air inside, so they end up weighing almost exactly the same. All D-Balls use a quick-release lever mount, whereas the AT-PL has a thumb screw, which allows it to sit lower on the rail. However, the size of the AT-PL means it still intrudes into the sight picture just as much as a D-Ball. Where things get really wild is the controls. Both units have a fire button on top, but the D-Ball A2 has a pair of switches at the rear to control modes and activation behavior. The left switch controls how the unit is activated, momentary or constant on, for high or low power. The right switch controls which emitters are active, visible, IR illuminator only, IR illuminator and designator, or IR designator only. The AT-PL has a single switch on the top of the body, which frees up the back of the unit for the battery compartment. It's much easier to change the battery on an AT-PL than any of the D-Balls with their front-loading battery crammed between two laser emitters. The AT-PL switch has a vis laser setting counterclockwise from the off position, and all the IR modes clockwise from off. IR designator low, IR designator and illuminator low, IR designator high, IR illuminator high, and dual IR high. The AT-PL also has a programming setting which allows you to reduce the pulse rate of the laser. On the one hand, I prefer the simplicity of the AT-PL's controls, however the A2 does let you do some cool stuff. You can keep the device in dual IR designator slash illuminator mode and switch easily from low to high power using the other switch. Every time I use the AT-PL, I somehow manage to lose track of where the dual low mode is. The sort of arbitrary decision to omit an illuminator-only low mode reduces the number of clicks on the switch, but also makes it hard to remember where everything is. Both of these examples are full power units, but the exact power level of the AT-PL has changed a little over the years. On dual IR high mode, these two are virtually indistinguishable. Very powerful. You love to see it. For some reason, the low mode of this particular A2 looks totally jacked up. It creates a dim diagonal slice of illumination with blank areas around it. I'm not sure if that's because it's really old or if something is screwed up with it. The low power illuminator on the AT-PL is even, although like most laser-based illuminators, both of these have that petri dish effect in parts of the illumination pattern. The Viz laser on the AT-PL, or at least this version of it, is not a full power laser. It's a 5 milliwatt red laser, the same as you would get on a civilian model. The A2 does have a full power visible red laser, so it's much more useful for daytime zeroing. As much as I appreciate the output of a full power IR device, I think both of these units are kind of annoying. The D-Ball A2 has been supplanted by the updated D-Ball A3, which drops the dual switch layout and adds a visible override port to the back. I have no use for the visible override function. I still prefer the form factor of the D-Balls to the AT-PL. The bloated plastic shell of the AT-PL takes up so much goddamn room on a rail. It's also created an entire cottage industry of aftermarket products to try to cram accessories as close to the AT-PL as possible. It's all kind of a moot point since it's so hard to get full powered lasers in the first place. You basically take what you can get. If I could buy some kind of hypothetical full power version of the D-Ball I-2 that didn't fall apart at the slightest provocation and was backed up by the customer service and quality control of a company other than Steiner, that would be great. 
but I can't. All right, see you next time. Ain't over. Hi, how are you? <laughs>